Please join in our opening hymn found in the Blue Gather Hymn Book, 380, Glory and Praise to Our God. That's 380. Please stand. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Brothers and sisters, let us call to mind our sins, so to prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, direct our actions according to your good pleasure, that in the name of your beloved Son we may abound in good works through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Nehemiah. Ezra, the high priest, brought the law before the assembly, which consisted of men, women, and those children old enough to understand. Standing at one end of the open place that was before the water gate, he read out of the book from daybreak till midday in the presence of the men, the women, and those children old enough to understand and all the people listened attentively to the book of the law. Ezra the scribe stood on a wooden platform that had been made for the occasion. He opened the scroll so that all the people might see it, for he was standing higher up than any of the people, and as he opened it, all the people rose. Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God, And all the people, their hands raised high, answered, Amen, Amen. Then they bowed down and prostrated before the Lord, their faces to the ground. Ezra read plainly from the book of the law of God, interpreting it so that all could understand what was read. Then Nehemiah, that is his excellency, and Ezra the priest scribe, And the Levites, who were instructing the people, said to all the people, Today is holy to the Lord your God. Do not be sad and do not weep. For all the people were weeping as they heard the words of the law. He said further, Go, eat rich foods and drink sweet drinks, for allot portions to those who have nothing prepared. For today is holy to our Lord. Do not be sad in this day, for rejoicing in the Lord must be your strength. The Lord, the word of the Lord. The responsorial psalm may be found in your Blue Gather Hymn Book, page 26. Lord, you have the words. That's 2-6.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, as a body is one, though it has many parts, and all the parts of the body, though many, are one body, so also Christ. For in one spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slaves or free persons, we were all given to drink of the one spirit. Now the body is not a single part, but many. If a foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, it does not for this reason belong any less to the body. Or if an ear should say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, it does not for this reason belong on any less to the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole body were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But as it is, God placed the parts, each one of them, in the body as he intended. If they were all one part, where would the body be? But as it is, there are many parts, yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I do not need you, nor can the head say to the feet, I do not need you. Indeed, the parts of the body that seem to be weaker are all the more necessary. And those parts of the body that we consider less honorable, we surround with greater honor. And our less presentable parts are treated with greater propriety, whereas our most presentable parts, we do not need this. But God has so constructed the body as to give greater honor to a pot that it is without it, so that there may be no division in the body, but that the parts may have the same concern for one another. If one part suffers, all the parts suffer with it. If one part is honored, all the parts share its joy. Now you are Christ's body and individually parts of it. Some people God has designated in the church to be first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then mighty deeds, then gifts of healing, assistance, administration, and variety of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all work mighty deeds? Do all have gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret? The word of the Lord. with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Since many have undertaken to compile a narrative of the events that have been fulfilled among us, just as those who were eyewitnesses from the beginning and ministers of the word have handed them down to us, I too have decided, after investigating everything accurately anew, to write it down in an orderly sequence for you, most excellent Theophilus, so that you may realize the certainty of the teachings you have received. Jesus, 
returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit, and news of him spread throughout the whole region. He taught in their synagogues and was praised by all. He came to Nazareth, where he had grown up, and went according to his custom in the synagogue on the Sabbath day. He stood up to read and was handed a scroll of the prophet Isaiah. He unrolled the scroll and found the passage where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring glad tidings to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, and to proclaim a year acceptable to the Lord. Rolling up the scroll, he handed it back to the attendant and sat down, and the eyes of all in the synagogue looked intently at him. He said to them, Today, this scripture passage is fulfilled in your hearing. The Gospel of the Lord. Given this beautiful, beautiful gospel today from the first part of Luke's gospel, Luke's gospel Jesus opening up the scroll and proclaiming that prophecy of Isaiah. And I'll just read it once again. I have notes on it, so this might be a little partial. They have come to bring glad tidings to the poor, to proclaim liberty to captives, recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, and a year acceptable to the Lord. This comes at the very beginning of the Gospel of Luke, and is meant to be a a preparation, a, a lens through which we see the rest of the Gospel. This is Jesus's mission as presented in this Gospel. And of course, we, we know that line, which the, the last line, today, this scripture passage is fulfilled in your hearing. And everyone's jaw drops you know, as this young Jesus, relatively young Jesus, proclaiming these words, that he is the fulfillment. It's, it's the, the import of this meaning, of this, of this gospel. He is the fulfillment of this prophecy. It's he, God incarnate, God come in the flesh. As they listen to those words and as they see him, this is taking place. Glad tidings for the poor, liberty for captives, recovery of sight for the blind, and the oppressed being set free. All in Him. And of course, we see it, we, it's, it's in Him, it's, it's in His body where He encounters others. And it's, of course, the same is true for us when we come into contact with Him. We experience the fulfillment, even now, of this prophecy, ourselves being set free, the poverty of our lives. Rejoicing, and we we see it revealed. Of course, I want to say we we see it whenever we see Jesus. But it's important to look at the rest of the gospel and all of the gospels, really, to pick up on part of what he's saying there. Because what do we see when, when the poor encounter Jesus? We see them rejoicing because he has come among them as one who is so poor. We come as he preaches to his disciples, bringing the kingdom. We come to experience the kingdom as one where the poor are at the top, in a sense. The poor, the little ones, the weak 
are the greatest. And he's revealing the heart of God, the very face of God. Liberty to captives and oppressed being set free because we're coming to see in Jesus the goodness of God, his merciful love, which sets all of us free. And of course, when he encounters sinners, those who are entrapped in sin, they come and they, they taste the goodness of God, and we see that this freedom that is given to their hearts suddenly changed, suddenly made more generous. And what's the other point? Recovery of sight to the blind. In many cases, of course, literally healing the physically blind. God incarnate coming to bring healing, not only for the blind, but also healing for, for those who are who are sick in other ways, rising from the dead, all of this healing, but also opening the eyes of those who are very deeply spiritually blind, those who are so caught in their pride and in their sin, when they come into contact with him, their whole world turns over. If they would actually look at him, of course, some we, we see in the Gospels refuse to be touched by him. But those who encounter him have their eyes opened to see the truth of life, that our neighbor is our brother, that we are so deeply in need, that we are to have our eyes open, that we are beloved, beloved sons and daughters of God. All of this is a great gift that is given to us by encountering Jesus, by seeing him, knowing him, spending time with him. It's fulfilled right now, this healing in our life, healing in the world. It's also fulfilled in another way, and I I'm going to say this a couple of times because sometimes we forget it, but it is so true. It's fulfilled in our healing through us. I'm going to say it again. It's fulfilled in our hearing through us. It's also through us. When we go out into the world in our families, in our workplaces, in, in, our, in our leisure, in our political lives, when any time anyone sees us, we are carrying this proclamation, or at least we are meant to be carrying this proclamation. And so it, become, it can very easily become in a good way, a kind of examination of conscience for us. When others encounter us, are they set free? Are their lives in some way made lighter? Because they have come to know a little more deeply the love of God. Do they know that? Do they see that in us? When others encounter us, are their eyes opened? There's another way to live. There's more to this life than just things. There's more to this life than just that this hustle and bustle, get to the top of the line and, and make money or, or whatever the, the lies of the world is. Do they see? There's something so different. When they encounter us, are their eyes opened a little bit more deeply to the love of our Father? I am loved deeply. This is the, the grace that every Christian is blessed with. I, I love that line. That it's the Spirit of the Lord has anointed me. We heard all about the power of the Spirit in the, in the second reading today, this, the, the gifts that the Holy Spirit gives. 
all of us have been anointed in the gift of our baptism and through the sacrament of confirmation. So we can all say with Jesus, emphasis, it's with Jesus. We are, we're meant to live him after we receive him. That the Spirit of the Lord has anointed us for all of these things. We're meant to be living the gospel, allowing it today to be filled, fulfilled in the hearing of all who encounter us. So we ask for that grace to lean into it today. So just for our meditation, what might one way are you today being called to accept this beautiful mission? Just one way for you personally to embrace it more deeply this evening. Stand together and proclaim our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us, men, and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With confidence in our Father, let us turn to him with our needs. For the church, that we may be bearers of the good news to those who are poor or oppressed or ill or in despair, that we may reflect God's compassion and generosity to those whom we touch, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For leaders of our country and our community, that they may preserve in their work to achieve liberty and justice for all, especially the marginalized and forgotten, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those members of the body of Christ who are often regarded as weaker or unworthy, that they may be recognized as necessary and valuable and treated with dignity and worth, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For a renewed reverence for all human life, from conception to natural death, especially for the unborn, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who suffer from the bitter cold of winter, especially those who are homeless, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For Isla, Elizabeth, Kachibar, who will be baptized in our church this weekend. For those who are sick or homebound, 
especially Carol Hoffman, Macrina Sudbeck, Beverly Mead, Evelyn Mastansky, and Frankie Cruz. And for those who have died, especially Kenneth Bolig and Richard Mabison. And for the people of the parish for whom this holy mass is being offered, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. God of love and compassion, look with mercy on your people as we offer our prayers to you. Grant them according to your will and comfort all those in need. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. As the gifts are being prepared, please join in singing out of your Blue Gather hymn book. 530, We Are Many Parts. That's 530. brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept our offerings, O Lord, we pray, and in sanctifying them, grant that they may profit us for salvation, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, 
He stretched out his hands as he endured his passion so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Bernard, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer one another the sign of peace. Jesus, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Jesus, Lamb. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
As we approach God's table, please join in singing out of your Blue Gather hymn book, 589, All Who Hunger, that's 589. Some brightly burning, some 
dark and cold There is a spirit Who brings a fire Ignites a candle And makes his home so carry a candle Run to the darkness Seek out the hopeless Confused and torn Hold out your Frustrated brother, see how he's tried to light his own candle some other way. See now your sister, she's been robbed and lied to, still holds a candle. Seek out the helpless, deceived and poor. Hold down to your candle for all to see it. Take your candle and go light your world. Carry your candle, run to the darkness. Hold out your candle for all to see it. Take your candle and go light your world. Take your candle and go light your Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that receiving the grace by which you bring us to new life we may always glory in your gift, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just a couple of announcements. 
a whole page of announcements. <laughs> Remember that we have added an additional Sunday Mass at 7.15 a.m., so it's, that's for those who would like to wear masks and there'll be social distancing, please spread the word if you know someone who would like to attend a Mass like that. We are also still looking for people who would like to fill in a few adoration times or be substitutes for adoration when others run into conflict. So that, that sign up is in the gather space on the left. One of the times we're looking for right now especially is at 2 a.m. on Friday morning. Registration for our Lenten faith study entitled No Greater Love, A Biblical Walk Through Christ's Passion begins today. So this will be a five-week study beginning the week of February 28th. You can register at the table in the gather space today or in the parish office. Remember to mark your calendar for the upcoming Mardi Gras Italian dinner on Saturday, February 26th. This will be a catered dinner and there will be a limited number of seats sold. So tickets are on sale after Mass today. After, after, five, after Mass, and tickets are on sale today after Mass in the gather space. IHM will be hosting a blood drive on Tuesday, February 1st. The need for blood right now is critical. More details are in the bulletin. Notre Dame Academy is enrolling for the 2022-23 school year. Registration is open for ages two through eighth grade. To register or request a tour, you can contact Notre Dame Academy. Just a quick announcement also that the date for our music cafe has been changed to February 20th. There's more information in the gather space. We'll, we'll be gathering out there February 20th between 5 and 8 p.m. Just a, a word about that. That's a great evening, a lot of fun, very relaxing, a great uh, date night to come and enjoy here that evening, February 20th. Two longtime parishioners have passed away, Kenneth Bollig and Richard Mavison. Kenneth's funeral will be Tuesday, January 25th at 11 a.m., and Richard's will be Friday, January 28th, also at 11 a.m. So let's pray together for the repose of their souls and for the consolation of their family. Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord. May they rest in peace. May their souls and the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. And for their families, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. As we ready ourselves to go, please join in singing out of your Blue Gather hymn book, 500, Lord, When You Came. That's 500. my boat can